Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a, a short demo to make this Valentine's heart and I'm doing this to actually just a little bit for fun and to demonstrate the the beast blind in the sketcher, the copy tool in this, uh, the, the mirror tool in the sketcher. So it mirrors one side to the other. I'll be mirroring this line to this line and also and um, and just to again talk about and also to uh, I wanted to show how you can uh, um, not chamfer uh, forgetting a uh, fillet multiple lines at the same time and and also a multiple fillet uh, stumbling block or a common fillet stumbling block I'm sorry so let's start out by making a new object and we're gonna do this in part design so I'm gonna do a body and a sketch and click OK and we're going to be using this beast blind, so we're not, we're not going to use uh, a periodic one because that uh, makes a continuous loop. We're just being doing doing um, half of one. So I to make my heart, I'm going to just I'm going to lock this to this uh, to the uh, y-axis line, and I'm going to create a very really rough version of the heart. Um, I find that works pretty good to make the shape I want. So that's going to be my rough version of the heart, and you'll notice as soon as as soon as I click this last one, and I right click it, uh, this these lines turn into the curve, and that's based on the weight of each. And I right click to get rid of this B spline creation tool, and that's based on the weight of the, each of these, and by default um, they're constrained to be all the same, and to have uh, the one millimeter one millimeter diameter diameter and that's of the construction geometry that creates the weight so just to show you what this can do I'm going to delete these um, so that I got rid of all the equals constraints and I, I left this one so as you change the size of the circle that that just indicates the strength to which it pulls the B spline so you can see as I make it bigger it pulls that spline closer to that dot and I have to make it smaller it has less effect so I don't know if it's strength or gravity or whatever you want to call it um, and then when you reposition the circle, that you know, predictably is is the direction or vector at which it pulls the it pulls the B spline. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, B splines can be uh, unintuitive at first, but once you kind of understand that, they seem to fall into place. So I'm I'm going to leave that unconstrained because I I'm not really this is not a perfection an exercise in perfection. So. Um, so at this point I want to show you, so that's, that's B-Spline Basics, at this point I want to show you the mirror tool on, uh, on the sketcher. And if you, it, it's not called mirror, but you'll notice you have your normal constraints here, and then you have these auxiliary tools here. And the one I want to show you is to copy a structure. So this creates a, a symmetric geometry with respect to the last point. So you select the geometry you want to copy or mirror and the point at which you want to mirror around. And you get the second half just like that. So that's how you create your heart shape. Um, and it's gonna be symmetrical. Now, uh, this is not a B-spline. This is a independent geometry. And if I change this, it doesn't change the other. Um, so keep that in mind. If you want it to, uh, there's, you'd have to probably create two separate B-splines with, uh, with some kind of equals constraints or something to have them match each other. So uh, I'm going to close that and we're just going to um, we're just going to pad that to make our heart block. We're just going to make let's just make it four millimeters high and okay. So that's our basic heart shape. So the next piece I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch on this plane and that's also going to be a mirrored B-spline. Um, now I just for, just for brevity, I want to. I just decided I'm just going to freehand it and make it similar. So it's not going to be exactly the same heart shape, but just just similar. And we're just going to get it as close as we can. Um, get rid of that last one. And I, I intuitively clicked the wrong side. Sorry. Let's try that again. So we're just creating a basic shape. Right click to get to end it, and right click to stop. Sorry. So now I want to. I'm going to just drag these around to get, you know, a, um, a symmetry with the outer shape there. I'll get it close to close to an even edge. That's good enough. 
So now we're going to just co copy that again, just like we did before. And oops, I forgot my symmetry line. So click the geometry and the symmetry line and copy it. So that's good. And I, so that creates a closed geometry without having to, to uh, select these points, um, I believe. So let's test that theory by um, padding that sketch. We're pocketing that sketch, I'm sorry. So we're going to pocket it just to, uh, let's just do two millimeters. For some reason my computer is running extra slow. Let's, let's just do it one millimeter, let's change that. Change data to one millimeter, okay. And good. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add, um, I'm going to do uh, fillets. And I want to show you that you can do uh, one of the pitfalls of fillet, fillets, it uh, would be a nice to have a message, but it doesn't. So um, I want to fillet all these edges at the same time. So I select all the edges, and I'm hitting Control as I select. And um, often, because the one millimeter default for a fillet is greater than this, it's going to it's going to uh, make the make the drawing invisible. And that's just because it's it's basically an uh, an error that uh, is imp it's impossible for that fill to exist. So you you know by changing the radius, I can get my object to come back. So FreeCAD doesn't know what to do, or it does know what to do, but the, it just the result is that there's uh, a non-existent object, or or it doesn't want to display it. I'm not really sure. Um, it doesn't matter. It's just know know that your if your fillet exceeds the uh, the distance of the of the object receiving the fillet, it's gonna have a, it's gonna be a problem. So it creates a really nice fillet. So I was able. I used to think that um, you could you could only fillet so many things at a at, at a time, but really what it is is if the fillet finds if it's trying to fill it greater than the face, it's filleting. Uh, it just disappears and or creates an error. So if, uh, if you tried to, if you did one millimeter and just try to click OK, it would it would uh, create an error message because it can't do it. So that's my fillet. And the last thing I'm going to do is add shape strings. Now shape strings, it's a little bit funny because um, it's like they don't want to be a part of the uh, of the body, so um, you kind of have to force it. So let's um, let, me, let me create a shape string. I'm just going to click it, put it in the center of the body here, and this is going to be uh, the words. Uh, let's do it all caps. And it's going to be B. I can leave it there. And um, this is the the terrible Unix directory. So user share fonts, and I'm run shift, and it's going to be regular. And that's just a font that I downloaded at some point. So. What the first thing I would think you should do um, is to make this part of the body before you do anything else to it, because I found that it just seems to fail uh, if you if you don't make it part of the body first. Um, so to do that, you have to be in parts design, and then I should be able to move object to another body, and that's the only body there. So now it's part of that body. Um, so now. I can uh, now I'll be able to extrude that, but first let me move that to the right spot. Um, so placement, and the thing I've I don't know if this has always been this way, but now when you uh, when you hit your scroll wheel, it it live updates. I really like that. It just makes it a little bit easier to to uh, move things around. Um, so that's that's good. So we're going to leave that. To, we're done with that, and now we're going to uh, let's try let's try to pad this. Um, let's see if that works. I don't think that works. And I'm going to prove myself wrong. So my uh, computer is running really slow, so I'm going to pause this for a second while it pads. So the pad finished, and you'll see it's giant. So I'm going to change this to uh, 2 millimeters, and it'll probably take a long time for it to do that as well. So um, I just hit 2 and enter. You see it's not even updating on here. I'm, I don't know why it's running so slow today, but I'm going to pause while it, while it catches up. Okay, so uh, my computer caught up, and now 
I'm gonna go back into draft mode and we're gonna add another shape string. And I, I kind of recommend doing these one at a time. Um, and it, it might just be me, I'm not sure, but it, it seems to process a little bit better and be less, a little less confusing. So I'm just gonna stick that one in the center as well. And the string is gonna just be mine. So height is one millimeter, tracking is the default. And it's the crazy Unix font director again, share. Um, and I, I wanna encourage you to not judge Unix at this point, or Linux, sorry. Um, because uh, you've just, in, in case of, uh, in case of, you know, this being harder, easier or harder than, uh, my font was wrong, easier or harder than Windows, it's, it's really that just that you're used to it or you're not used to it. It's not really that it's harder than where Windows fonts are, it's just that you're used to where these fonts are. Uh, so let's see if that updates. I'm going to pause while my computer catches up. Okay, so you'll see it's it's placed the B mine and now I want to uh, move that around. So I'm just going to go into position and um, so whenever it, it gets these micrometers or whatever the U is, I forget, I change it to millimeters um, unless, you know, unless you're working with my, that measurement. So there's mine and let's move this down. Let's get this to an Go, let's go with this so, and go into even measurement because bam dead center good so now um, now again let's make this let's move back to the part design and make this shape string part of the body because uh, if you don't if you don't do that right away it's going to you're going to end up with some attachment that's going to keep you from doing it and um, uh, that you know it'll make it harder to do and then let's just pad this okay so I finished that up with a pad of of one and uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my PC because it took it all a full minute or two to to catch up and then the, the last thing I was going to do um, just to show you this I thought would be good is to change it to red um, so you can you can select um, an object and I'm going to change that shape the shape color so under the view tab I can go to the shape color and change it to red I'm going to make the whole thing red I think you can probably change other things too let's try see if uh, maybe not it's only going to be the visible piece so it let's see if I can change just the uh, I don't think you can change the shape string because it's shape string is not visible uh, for display I could probably make it visible nope yeah, it's not going to override that. So I think you can only, uh, because you're only going to have that last uh, change visible, you're only going to be able to change one, the body is going to be one one color. So you'd have to create a whole other body to do a, to a, to a separate color within it. So that would be like, that would be an assembly. So there you have it. There's your, uh, there's your Valentine. Really basic. You could change the, change the message how you want. And this is, this is printable. Uh, you, uh, I wouldn't print a large version of it, just print a small one. So I hope you like that, and happy Valentine's Day. And um, please subscribe if you like my channel. And uh, also, please comment if you have any ideas on what you'd like me to do videos of. I, I definitely uh, would like to keep doing free CAD. I'm going to do more, open, get back to OpenSCAD for a while, too. Um, and uh, that's it. Have a great day.